Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TrottenFeather.com and in this YouTube fly tying tutorial we have a special guest tire, Mr. Devin Olson of TacticalFlyFisher.com. In this video, Devin shares his Pleva shuttlecock, a pattern that worked for him during the World Fly Fishing Championships. <laughs> yes, you heard that correct. Stay tuned, you are going to love this one. Hello and welcome to this fly tying tutorial. My name is Devin Olson and in this tutorial I'm going to be tying for you the Pleva shuttlecock. And the shuttlecock is a common CDC style dry fly that you'll find throughout the year uh, throughout Europe and the UK. Uh, it's really a, a really good pattern for emerging type mayflies and in the film dry flies. Uh, that whenever you need flush floating patterns for fussy trout. And this one, the reason I call it the Pleva Peridigon, um or the Pleva Shuttlecock, uh, is that this comes from a color scheme that I used while we were fishing the Pleva River in Bosnia back in the 2015 World Fly Fishing Championships. Uh, that year I was fortunate enough to get a bronze uh, individual medal and 45% of the fish that I caught during my river sessions came uh, on dry flies and this was one of the most important dry flies that I had during that championship. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm starting with some 16 knot Vivas thread and you'll notice I'm leaving a little bit of gap at the front. That's on purpose. We'll come to that later. And I'm just going to wrap a single uh, thread base or th thread layer base back and then I've got some micro flash boot and I'm going to pinch wrap in and just slide back until I don't really have anything to trim off and I just want to cover it enough that I can get two to three turns in. And this is just kind of be a little flashy tag on the back to form a little trigger point. All right. I'm going to wrap back forward close to where I started my thread and then trim off that flash. All right, my next step, I'm going to, uh, I've got some chartreuse 70 denier uh, UTC thread, which I've doubled over to form a loop. And I've trimmed off the ends to make them flush. And I'm just going to slide them back until the thread tips are covered once I've tied them in and then I'm going to lay a thread base here and I don't really need much of a taper but I don't want any funny lumps um, and I do want just a gradual thickening taper to, from the abdomen to the thorax so that it somewhat suggests a mayfly or any other typical aquatic in insect that you'd find <clears throat> that has that little bit of taper to it but I'm keeping it thin overall. It's, it's not a thick body. I don't want this thick. Um, thinner the better. All right, now I've got some uh, Stonfo Roto dubbing, uh, dubbing twister here. And I'm just gonna spin up this loop of UTC thread. And this is gonna form just a ribbing. And when you spin a thinner, a uh, thread like this, it kind of forms a more bound, like a rope, so it'll stand out from the body a little bit more, and it's also tougher than a single filament that's spun. When you have two two thinner ones that are spun together, it's uh, it's tougher, so you'll get a little more durability out of this than you will out of like a single strand of 140 denier that was spun, but you also get the raised look of the ribbing, so it stands out from that olive and you get that chartreuse on olive banding. All right, so at this point, I am just gonna whip finish it and then I'm gonna cover it in some Loctite brushable super glue. And on a lot of flies like this, you, you would normally use some resin, like if this was a peridigone or something. And if you've seen the pleave of peridigone that I have tied in the past on, on another video, you'll see that I use resin there. but I don't want resin in this one simply because with this um, dry fly, I don't want the buildup of weight that can lead to the fly sinking. So 
that super glue with just a single layer, it's going to soak in. It'll still give it a little bit of gloss. This super glue, unlike other super glues, does have some gloss, but uh, it'll soak in, hold the fly together, and it won't add a whole bunch of extra weight. Now, what you just saw is that I put that fly on a different, uh, just a foam that I've got sitting here, and I have a, another fly that I've prepared to that same point. And what I'll typically do is tie a half dozen or a dozen or however many I think I'm going to do up until that point and uh, then just let them dry because I don't want to do it with wet glue. So I'm going to reattach my thread here and all right, our next step here is going to be to add some CDC. Now you can just use one color to, to make it as imitative as possible. But if you want a little bit of uh, extra visibility, you can also add some pink or other bright colored CDC in there. So we're going to do that. And what I've done here is I've taken a CDC feather and I've swept the fibers down like this to expose the tip. And I'm going to trim that quill out of the tip so that we just have the CDC fibers themselves. And if you have a large feather like this, you can actually split it in two. And cut it in half and do the same thing. Um, stroke the fibers up on both and then you can basically get the effect of two feathers here. And normally, this is a size 18 fly. And you'll see I'm doing this with some pink CDC here as well. This is a size 18 fly and you're gonna need probably at least two feathers or the fibers from two CDC feathers for this. If they're kind of weak CDC feathers, you might even need three. And then as you get into larger sizes, you know, if you're in uh, some 16s, 14s, or if you do them all the way up to like a 12 or something, you're, you might want three or four feathers. Okay, so now I've got just kind of natural CDC and then some pink CDC. The naturals together. <clears throat> I'm going to um, turn this around so the fibers are facing forward. And then I want to tie these in just in front of the quill. So I don't want to bind down the quill. I want to bind just in front of it. And I'm going to try and trim those fibers off as flush as possible behind. You could cover them up with some dubbing, but I haven't found that it makes much of a difference. It's more just a cosmetic thing. Um, I am going to just cover the thread wraps a little bit. And I have some Adams Gray super fine dubbing here. I'm just gonna dub a very, very thin little bit on the thread. And I will cover my thread wraps behind and then I will prop up the CDC fibers and put a thread bump in front. And what that does is it props up those CDC fibers and it also it will splay them out a little bit, especially if you do it by hand. And spread out the fibers with your fingers. And if you can splay those fibers out, it'll spread the, the fibers enough to actually displace some more weight, so it's a little more buoyant. And now, so, uh, that's basically it, other than we're gonna clean some things up. So I'm just gonna do a couple whip finishes. And then the fibers are still straggling here, right? I want to get them all to about the same uh, length. And I want the length to be maybe just a little bit longer than the shank of the hook. So I'm going to measure that out and I'm going to take my fingernails up here and I'm basically just going to break it off. And it's best if you break it off long to begin with. You can always break it off again later to make them shorter, but you can't make them grow back. And I got some straggling fibers down there I'm going to trim out. But that's pretty much it. That's the plea of a shuttlecock. It's a very, very effective pattern for fussy fish that want an in the film type dry fly. Um, great for those emerging, you know, insect type situations. Uh, I've caught fish in plenty of mayfly hatches, hatches, but even just any time that I see fish 
surprising. Um, to small flies that I can't even, maybe not even see what they're rising for. It's worked during midge hatches, for instance. And this is a, a great pattern to, to be able to, to target those fussy trout. So I hope you out, try it out on your local water. Mess with the color schemes to help you uh, match whatever your local insects are, and, and good luck. I think you all agree with me when I say that the Pleva shuttlecock looks like a guaranteed winner. Very similar to Devin's Pleva Paradigon. And if you don't know about that Paradigon, go and watch that video like in five minutes, as soon as this one's over. Well, Devin, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to share this video with all of us, and I hope to have you on again in the future. Now, let me bring everybody up to speed with all things Devin Olson, at least the few things that I know. Uh, number one, he owns and operates tacticalflyfisher.com. It's a website that just is encompassing of so many things, fly fishing and fly tying. He also runs a blog through that website, and he kind of centers around the competitive fly fishing world. More on that in a bit. He's written a book, Tactical Fly Fishing, and it's received just some really great reviews, so look that one up. He's also been a part of a couple instructional fly fishing videos, known as Modern Nymphing and Modern Nymphing Elevated, both great ones, and as of summer 2019, rumor has it that they are working on a part three. And if you follow Tactical Fly Fisher via Instagram, you can get some occasional updates with that video over there. And Devin, I hope that project's going well. Now, most people, however, if I say the words Devin Olson, they are going to associate him with competitive fly fishing and Fly Fishing Team USA. As he mentioned during this video, he's been a part of the world's team for the United States a number of times. Um, he received the bronze back in 2015, and this fly that he's tying, the Pleva shuttlecock, relates back to that. So, you know, not on just behalf of this audience, but on behalf of so many people who really just enjoy and embrace the competitive fly fishing scene and really like to get behind the United States, Devin, thanks for just everything that you do to be an ambassador for our sport. I know it takes so much time away from your family, and we really appreciate everything. So keep it going and keep sharing and some of that information with us. We really appreciate it. Let's talk about this fly, both from fly fishing and fly tying perspectives. We'll start with the former. And as you heard Devin mention, he loves to use this one for those really finicky fish that maybe they appear to be feeding on the surface, but they're actually taking emergers out of that surface film, which is where this pattern tends to reside whenever you're fishing it. Whenever I think about the emerger, that's that stage between the nymph and the adult, and it's a very vulnerable stage as the insect is trying to pop through the surface film. So if you have a fish that is rising and you're not quite sure what it's taking, you've thrown a few patterns and you can't catch it, try this one. I have a feeling we're going to be catching a lot of stubborn fish on this fly. Now fly tying. If you're like me, you're going to want to tie this exactly like Devin. But don't be afraid to shift gears a little bit and try some variations. I know he would encourage that. And as you heard him say during the video, change the body color. That's an easy change based on some natural insects in your waterways. But there are other variations and I'm sure you've already thought about them. So just leave some of those ideas down below in the comments section. But let me give you a few more. That tag, I love that subtle color that Devin chose to use. Can you use something really bright like a UV or fluorescent colored thread? Absolutely, see how that works. And then also think about this as an emerger. Maybe tie on just a little piece of brown antron that will represent that nymphal shuck as it's just kind of being pushed away from the adult. See how those changes work for you. I also love that Devin talked about the notion of super glue versus resin, and I love both. I know that I love to peruse Instagram and Facebook and get some inspiration from all the patterns out there, but sometimes I see like 16 coats of resin on certain patterns, which is probably 14 or 15 coats too many. Now, this is intended to be a dry fly, or at least closer to the surface. So kind of think about that, that you don't want to really build up so much that it's going to pop through that surface, then start to drift down into the water column. That's not what you want with this pattern. So he used super glue, and that's really intended to really not build up too much mass. Can you get away with something like a Solaris bone dry with one coat? Absolutely, if you put it on very thin, but keep that in mind. And then finally, I love the notion of using just kind of a CDC indicator, like a hot pink or something that you can see at distance. Because I can imagine myself fishing with this pattern somewhere around 30 to 40 feet from wherever I'm standing, putting it over fish and trying my darndest to get that strike. But it can be tough to see at distance. So go for that. If you don't have any of that high-vis CDC, you can use something like a tuft of Antron as well. Now, those are some really just simple variations that could modify this pattern based on your needs, but again, let your creativity run wild and see what you can come up with. If you'd like to reach out to Devin, ask him a question, comment, or thank him for this video, you can do so via his website, tacticalflyfisher.com. And Devin, thank you again for doing this for all of us. 
If you'd like to watch more videos like this, you can check out my website, which is troutandfeather.com. Once there, you'll find over 200 categorized YouTube fly tying and fly fishing tutorials. There's even a page dedicated to guest tires, just like this video. If you scroll down the homepage, you can insert your email address and you'll receive monthly email updates from me. All things fly fishing and fly tying, tips, techniques, video updates, you name it, I'll try my best to send them. If you're into social media, you can find Trout and Feather on Instagram, Facebook, and maybe even on Snapchat. And if you have any questions or comments for this video, you can leave them down below in the comment section, or you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com. And thank you all for watching this video. Devin, once again, thank you so much, and I'll see all of you next time.